Right, let's try. Moment of truth. RTX 4090 Founders Edition. In this case, can we fit it? Or do we need to remove the existing fans from the case? Hey guys, we've been checking out loads of different cases and most of them were off of reasonable size, whether they were MATX, ITX or an ATX. What we've got for you today is something much, much smaller. In fact, it's almost PC console side. There is a case from Fractal and it's called Fractal Ridge. This is a updated higher end version of Note 202, which was mostly plastic and aluminum. This case is actually made out of anodized aluminum, six mil to be precise. So that's why it's actually kind of heavy. Let's get in there and have a look what we get in the box. Starting with a box of accessories. We have the typical screws, we've got some cable ties. We have the leg setup, uh, which is consists of this larger panel and this little unit. There's also the PCIe adapter and the manual with all the other documentation. And this is the main case. It's designed to stand up straight or on its side, so you can even fit inside your PC console. To be honest, if you look at it, it's kind of reminiscent of an older PlayStation or Xbox. Looks pretty good. Let's walk around the case itself. I said, it is pretty heavy. Uh, as you can see here, it's got basically air intake on almost every side, even behind here. So we've got plenty of holes for ventilation and you can see it at the back as well. All these panels on this case actually come off. So I'm just unscrew it. So you have to unscrew it and then kind of pop them open and pull them out. So it's a bit confusing. It's not the most intuitive approach, but hey, figure out in the end, huh? So pop it open and pull it out. So for these side panels, you do need to unscrew them and the front is just magnetic. So you can just pull it off and take it aside. Uh, here you have mesh. So it does make it look quite premium if you were to place it inside your TV console. The side panels are mounted using screws. You've got two on top and bottom, and obviously four per side. Um, but it seems like all the screws being used in this case are similar except for the fan screws. But we'll get to that a bit later on. That's your two panels removed, just four screws each. So that's quite easy. And we have now the case stripped down to its bones and it's a lot lighter. Due to the space constraints of this case, you have to mount the graphics card flat over here. Therefore, you have a PCIe riser card to support that. Um, this is an ITX mostly focused case. Um, you can install a DITX uh, motherboard, but for that you need to make some sacrifices and I believe you need to remove this 140 mil fan. Um, inside here, we can also fit an SFX or SFXL power supply, but we'll do the actual build slightly later on in the video. First, I kind of want to go through what else you get in the case. So we have a power button, we have two USB 3 ports, and you've got a Type-C port here as well. And this is an audio and microphone combo port to suit your needs. Um, inside the case, we can fit four SSDs. Uh, you can sell two of them here, and they have these little uh, capture style uh, mounts. So you can just kind of click them in and just route the cables. And you can install two more SSDs at the front over here. Overall, there's actually not that much about this case. Uh, because well it's compact so you can't really squeeze much in here but i'm really excited to build in it and one of the things i want to try to do is squeeze one of those 4090s in here and see if it fits and we'll also test a uh, thinner cast to see if we can utilize the fans and also make this run really really quietly on top of the existing two fans that we have over here we can actually also install three 80 mil fans to get an extra bit of airflow in I'm not sure which way you would actually do it. Um, you might actually have it just set to extract the air uh, that might be coming from the graphics card, just to keep it, the air all the way out. One of the limitations you need to consider is, since it's a small case, you can only fit a air cooler of up to 70 mil. So if you don't have that, or if you want to utilize a water-cooled system, uh, you can actually fit a 240 or 280 mil radiator. But then obviously you won't have the space for the graphics card on top of that. Um, the alternative here is to install a 120 mil uh, cooler on the side here and then potentially install a shorter card. There's not many of the small cards left if they want something high powered, but if you could be using this just as a home theater PC, then you could probably go that way as well. 
For the graphics card compatibility, what you want to do is consider the size of the graphics card and if you want to utilize the existing fans. Uh, here are the details, uh, so be careful to compare this, but we'll do some comparisons here as well and see. So let's just get into the build. For this build, we'll be using a ROG Strix B550 motherboard and a Ryzen 7 uh, CPU. So we'll be using a Ryzen 7 5700X, uh, which is a good mid-range CPU from the last generation. And I think it will be pretty good in a small case like this because it doesn't require too much cooling. To cool the CPU, we'll be using a low profile air cooler from ID Cooling. This is IS50X. This is a version two, but the version two just basically means that it also has compatibility with the Intel 1700 socket, but that doesn't really matter here. We're using an AM4 motherboard. Uh, for power supply, we've got one from Fractal, which is their Ion series, just an FSFX power supply. For the graphics cards, we'll be trying a few different ones to see where we can still utilize the existing fans or where we have to remove them. And it'll be both AMD and Nvidia. So that'll be an interesting one a bit later on. Um, for this, basically now, we still need to take this case a bit further apart. Again, that's kind of the thing you get with small cases. There's a limited amount of space to work in. Um, I do like the fact that Fractal does allow you to basically take it all apart with a few minor exceptions. So first, I'm going to take out the power supply case. Uh, that's the power supply bracket removed, um, four screws like everything else up to this point. And it only seems to have four screws for the GPU bracket. Two down here and one at the top. Uh, there's a bunch of cable retentions. So you can actually cable tie your cables obviously just the same way as they've done ahead of time here for you. So you can do it to all of these cable tie points. And there are a few more points over here. So you've got one more here uh, where you can just cable tie all your PCIe cables or whatnot. I've actually not installed the cooler before, which doesn't include a some sort of bracket that goes at the back or doesn't utilize an existing AMD or an Intel bracket that the motherboard might come with. Uh, in this case, you literally just set up the cooler, set it on, flip it over and screw directly into it with the screws. Kind of new for me. Yeah, that's looking good. We have a reasonable amount of space in between everything, really. Now, next step is to install this inside the case. So we can start with the IO shield. And just click it in place. And now we can slot in the motherboard. So the motherboard is in place. Make sure that all the ports are in the right place. Next step is to set up the power supply. So this is using a 650 watt SFX power supply, so it's fine for most mid-range systems. Don't expect to run a 4090 on this on full bore. Um, it'll probably run, but at some point you'll trip and you'll probably lose your game progress, so be warned. In this build, we're actually not gonna use any of SSDs, uh, but as, as mentioned before, you can install four of them. Uh, we're just gonna stick to the NVMe. Um, this board supports two of them, so you've got plenty of potential storage in there anyway. So for the power supply, it's important to plan it out. Um, since this bracket goes this way in, uh, you wanna make sure that your power supply fan is not obstructed. That way, the fan is pulling in fresh air from the outside and pushing it out at the back. Uh, if you mount it this way, there's a shroud behind the power supply. So you'll be obstructing you'll be obstructing the airflow and you gotta be suffocating the power supply, which is not ideal. Um, there is still a little bit of space underneath the power supply, so you can actually route some of the cables. Uh, but as I said, it's still best to have the fan above. We might as well route the power supply cable, the extension that goes from the back of the case over to the back of the power supply, since it's an internally mounted power supply. So you can still squeeze it out and loop it inside. So what we'll do is figure out what's the best way of hiding it. So what you see here is I had to push the cable across, plug it in and make a little loop here, which now kind of just interferes with these cables. But these cables just fall through, so it's okay. And as long as I still have access to the button, uh, I'm good to go. For the time being, what we'll do is we'll take these cables, just throw them over the side so they're not in the way. And the same goes for these two cables over here. I think I have two more headers up top. Yep, I've got two more headers on top for this. So I can plug them in at the top later on. So I'll just have them out of the way, already rooted in the right place, kind of preparing for later. 
In a small case like this, I think it's really important to think two or three steps ahead. Um, the next task here is to install the graphics card, but first we're gonna put bracket in. The moment we put bracket in, connecting all the cables will become a lot more challenging. So taking your CPU cable, the eight pin cable, and looping it behind the motherboard, uh, straight into the motherboard on the top, is probably the safest choice at this point, uh, because later on we'll have a lot less space. Depending on your motherboard, you're probably gonna to need to take this extension cable out just to plug in the eight pin connector at the top. Um, I do really appreciate that this case can be taken apart, majority of it at least. Right, let's next move on, on to the second portion of this, which is the graphics card. Uh, that's kind of the start of the show, huh? For the graphics card, it does mention that I need to plug the adapter back in, and it literally just slots straight into your PCIe slot. Uh, so I like the design. So it's very rigid and it actually supports your PC slot even more. The next step is the graphic card itself. Um, in the manual, they recommend removing this panel to get access to this area. But I think if you have a small enough graphics card, you could probably just slot it straight in by just by removing these connections over here. So this is the, just the Radeon 6700 XT. So it's actually pretty slim, pretty small card. Let's see if we can just straight away put it in and just mount it. Right, we could, but um, because of the way the mount is set up, we first need to install the little extender, and then we can mount the card. So let's just do that first. And the reason that they've done it this way is should you have a larger motherboard, uh, such as a DITX, uh, that's a bit longer. So therefore, you would plug in directly into it with a long, longer motherboard. The extension is in. There you go. So we still have a whole stack of space in between the card and the fans. You can see probably better from this angle. It's definitely getting heavy now. Still got loads of space. And you've got plenty of space to cable manage everything as well. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, and you don't, don't have to take off the side. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna take this off and see if I can fit in a larger card without taking off the side panel. This is a 6900 XT and it's considerably thicker. So let's see if that fits in and if we have any more space left. For this card, we should need, we should remove the bottom PC cover as well. Just to be safe. And yeah, that fits in not just fine with both of the fans are still installed. Definitely much heavier card, so I need to make sure to screw it in straight away. So I'm not putting too much pressure on the PCA bracket. As you can see here, oh, that's heavy. That still fits and you still have a little bit of a gap, but we're talking anything more might be a struggle. Uh, let's keep on trying. The other two cards that I have is a 4090 as well as 3080, um, but the 3080 is actually a really large Strix card. Uh, I did a test fit earlier and I am pretty certain that card is just too long for this or maybe too wide. I can't remember which one it was. Right, let's give this a go. So normal cards, or somewhat normal cards, fit. Right, look at this chunkers. Ah, oh, there we go. First issue, it doesn't think it doesn't fit in lengthwise, um, but one of the things I think it might happen is it, I, can, I might be able to take this bracket off as a recommended manual and just slot it in sideways because obviously these things still interfere. So I'm going to give that a go in a second. But before that, a 4090. Let's see if this will fit. So lengthwise, it's fine. The, I think the, different, the issue might be the height. So let's have a look. Uh, so I need to take off the side regardless. This is a little frustrating, but this bracket also includes four screws for the fan mount. So you have to take those out as well to take it off. So you your, your two fans will just be hanging. If 
for a little while on their own. And now the bracket comes out. All right, so we now have no side. Let's try the 3080. If I really try, if I expand it a bit, I think I can f actually I, I squeeze it in. Holy crap. That's in. That is actually in. I did not expect that at all. So this card, look at this tolerance. It's almost like it was made for this particular card. Look at this side. I can put a finger through. Still space, technically speaking. But underneath there, it's just, just not touching. So based on that, I don't think 49 is going to fit without with those fans in. But we can have a look. Right. Let's try. Moment of truth. RTX 4090 Founders Edition. In this case, can we fit it? Or do we need to remove the existing fans from the case? Oh. Oh, crap. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit by, we're talking millimeters. Look at this. It, it looks like it's almost slotted in, but it slots in above the PCA bracket. Unfortunately, as it stands right now for this Founders Edition card, it is just a few mil too thick to install together with these fans. Oh, wow. If only Fractal allowed for maybe another five mil, it's about five mil difference, that would have been a game changer. This would have just fit with everything in it. That would have been amazing. But as it stands right now, you can fit 4019 here but you cannot plug it in. Uh, so if you really want to use 1490 in a case like this, you would have to remove these fans. And to be honest, I think that's a little bit of a waste of the case because those two fans together with the, the graphics card in there would just provide such an amazing cooling, um, which we'll check out in a bit anyway. But um, yeah, I think this would have been a perfect combination. But hey, it's just a little bit too thick. We're going to install the 3080 back in. So this kind of goes back on here. So we, we have a limited amount of space. And actually, to be fair, now you might even have enough space here to still install those three fans as long as they're low profile. I don't think this is enough. This is a big card. It's a really big card. Even last generation, this was a really big card. So if you have one of the newer 4090s, um, yeah, this case is not for you unless you want to get rid of those fans. Uh, that's it, it's all assembled. Uh, the process itself was reasonably simple, providing you go in a logical step-by-step -step way, which is you start with assembling your motherboard, put in a power supply. Um, you can, depending on your cooler, you might want to route your power cables uh, to the right locations and also plug in your uh, front I.O. Um, then you put in your graphics card slot, or in this case, the graf graphics card bracket together with the actual adapter. Depending what graphics card you use and how much space it takes, you may need to remove the fans. Um, just make sure to route the cables as you're installing it. Um, so here, for the graphics card side, uh, we have cables just kind of sticking out from the top. Um, and then, I've rooted them around the graphics card, so it's not obstructing it at all. I didn't actually cable manage them, I kind of just stuffed them in there. Um, there is plenty of space with this cooler. Um, what I found interesting is, um, like, you can cable tie it and kind of hide it out of the way, but this is a closed case and nobody's ever going to see it. Um, so you can just stuff it in and be done with it. But uh, generally speaking, there is not much free space on this, and it is pretty nice component. So I'm thinking, 
How about we power up and see if it works? Let's get a power cable. Right. Oh. That's not good. So it's coming from this side. And after booting, the graphics card has obviously stopped spinning. So I think, yep, there is something catching on the graphics card fan. Okay, then we definitely have an issue with uh, fitting. What we'll do is I'll take it apart and check the graphics card if there's like a cable stuck in between them or something. So basically we're looking at these fans. These fans seem to be okay. If I just squeeze underneath uh, the fans on the graphics card, these, both of these are okay. But if we touch this one, it sometimes, it sometimes catches on the bottom of this fan um, mount. Not always, but it catches just ever so slightly. So ideally, I think if I were to be able to just to shim or like move this fan a bit upwards or just bend it out, then the tolerances, if I were able just to move this fan slightly up, maybe a few mil, um, I think that would actually solve the problem. I did, I did the thing. That was actually a somewhat simple fix. I took a credit card and I cut off a corner from it, which gave me a tiny bit of plastic that I can stuff in between the graphics card and the fan, therefore just separating them by maybe two mil. And um, voila, it doesn't make any more, uh, any more noise. There's just enough space now for, for the fans not to touch. And uh, we have a fully built working system. With it all assembled, um, there's actually three different modes that this unit can stand in. It could be set up in vertical mode or horizontal. With horizontal, there's actually two variances of how you can set up your feet. This is one of them with the feet at the front and the back. And then another variable is you can actually have the feet on the left and on the right. And what's interesting is while it's in the vertical mode, it actually looks really, really slim. The moment you put it down in a more horizontal mode like this, it does tend to look a bit bigger than it actually is because there's a gap in between. Other than that, one quick observation on performance that we've really noticed is the sound of the fans changes as soon as you put the panel on. Have a listen to this. Let me just take this off first and I'll power it up. So what we did was we set these two fans to 50% speed just to keep it consistent. And have a listen to this now. Because the airflow is hindered, there's clearly more turbulence, thus the noise that we get. This is only at 50% fan speed. Let's get into the benchmarks and see how it actually performs. Now that the testing is done, I can with certainty say that the case is really good for the GPU and also pretty challenging for the CPU. But that does come with some caveats. First of all, my MacGyvering of a little bit of plastic to separate the GPU from the fan butting against didn't completely solve the issue the fan was still sometimes catching. To keep things fair and not break the GPU fan, I swapped it for the RX 6900 XT, which fits in there very comfortably. Then we set the GPU fan speed to 50%, as it stays below the targeted 35 dBA and got to match the rest of the components. This ended up with 70% speed on the CPU cooler fan and 35% speed on the case fans. While benchmarking, we found that when mounting horizontally, the CPU is on average 7 to 10 degrees hotter than when the case is set up vertically. With this particular chip, this is a difference between running hot and thermal throttling. Sure, you can let it rip, but then it won't be a small and quiet machine. For those interested, keeping the GPU fan speed the same and then getting CPU and case fans to 100% results in 53.4 dBA howling in vertical orientation and 49.3 dBA while horizontally mounted. When it comes to GPU temperature, even in noise normalized tests, it was actually really well contained due to the case fans feeding it with fresh air all the time. And while orientation did make a slight difference, it was not as drastic as the CPU. 
This brings us to the caveats of this case. GPU performance here is great, while CPU is somewhat choking in a tight space. This is partially due to the size of the cooler and really basic fan, but mostly because there's no way to get fresh air in and exhaust hot air out, so the cooler is recirculating the same air over and over. Here the performance will depend on what you're building. If you're building a HTPC and you want something quiet, I would recommend going for a low powered CPU, ideally something in a 65 watt range, and adding water cooler to it. If you need a graphics card for some extra oomph, then I would recommend something half length like the new Intel A380 from ASRock. On the flip side, if you want to play 4K games, then the cooler like we have here and a 65 watt chip will be great, as most of the work is done on the GPU, which gets cooled really well. Overall, I really like the build quality and design in this case. It does look very premium and it has a price to match. At $120, it's not exactly cheap, but what do you guys think? Would you pick it up for a small build or build in something even smaller? If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.